All right, let's take a look at the second FRQ from 2023 AP Physics 2 exam. Solutions aren't going to be out till later, so these are my best stab at a solution. If I have any corrections, I will put it as a pinned comment below. So students are asked to experimentally determine whether a component is a resistor or uncharged capacitor. Complete the following diagram to show us use standard circuit equipment to determine whether the component is a resistor or uncharged capacitor. So let's pretty much I'm just going to like look at the voltage and the current and then <clears throat> if it's an uncharged capacitor, it should kind of, you know, level off, the voltage should level off, or um, if, you know, like, or you can measure the current and the current would level off to zero. I mean, either way, that's kind of like the, so let's say what I'm going to do is first hook up a battery source. Okay, and then <clears throat> I might measure the voltage across this thing. And uh, you could just put the voltmeter. If you want to use an ammeter, you would put that in series, but we'll just use a voltmeter and put it in parallel, right? If you want potential difference, must be measured parallel. Current must be measured in series, okay? So uh, describe an experimental procedure to determine whether the component is a resistor, uncharged capacitor, refer to the circuit equipment. So we are going to um, connect a voltage source and voltmeter. as shown, okay? And then what we're gonna do next is we are going to, um, um, we're going to, you know, record the voltage across the circuit component over time. And, um, pretty much I, might, I repeat this a few times repeat so then well we'll say we'll discharge it discharge by grounding by um by shorting the circuit component and then i would say i just repeat this a few times repeat this five times what well, results would the student expect if the component is uncharged capacitor? If it's an uncharged capacitor, um, you would expect the you would expect the voltage to start at zero. You would expect the voltage observed to start at zero, and increase to uh, the voltage the, the voltage value across the battery of the battery. And in terms of charge, you say battery because initially it is uncharged. And as current flows, it will gain charge. Something of that effect would be fine, I think. <clears throat> Students conduct a different experiment to determine the EMF of the battery that is not ideal and has internal resistance R equals 30, so like that. Battery is connected to a variable resistor shown on the circuit. Students measure the current I through the circuit for different values of R var. Of the variable resistor that is connected to the battery, the following table contains the data collected. Write an equation describing E, I, R, and R var. Okay, so we want an equation that's generally gonna be a loop equation. Right, so let's say we have the current through the circuit. So let's say the current's gonna flow like this, right? And you just wanna add up the voltage drops here, right? And they're gonna equal, so you would just say the, the voltage source is gonna equal the voltage drop across there plus the voltage drop across there. And the I is in series, so it's the same current. So it's just gonna be is equal to I times R plus I times R there. Okay, so that would be my loop equation. And that would be sufficient. Which quantities, quantities could be graphed to yield a straight line that could be used to calculate the numerical value of this? So you want this to be kind of like the slope or the y-intercept. So because we're doing the current and r there, you're going to want to move one of these to the other side. Okay, like let's say I don't, I maybe I might not know this value here. Okay, but I'm observing this value. So let, we'll do, maybe we'll just make this quantity though. Um, <clears throat> we will make the... I don't know, we'll make I the Y value, I guess. 
So we could just solve for this. So you just get E minus I times R there is equal to I R. And if we're just going to make current the Y value, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could do this, honestly. You don't know what little r is. So like this would be epsilon over R minus, um, actually, sorry, you have I over here. So we would actually, sorry, let me say a little bit, a little bit different like that. Because you would want the I on, you, you can't have it on both sides. So you would put a factor out the I there. And so you might say I times R plus big R there. Like there's a lot of answers you could honestly do for this. You could say I is equal to epsilon over R plus R there, like this. And this isn't like particularly good to find slope and Y intercept because I, I can't, I don't want to use the little R. So I might do the reciprocal of this guy. So I might say one over I is equal to R plus R there over epsilon. And so like this could be your Y value and you could make this one over epsilon times little r plus one over epsilon times r there. So you could plot this as like your Y value. You could plot this as say your X value. Then this would be your slope. And then this whole thing would be your Y intercept here. This would be my Y intercept. So y equals mx plus b, right? So I'm going to plot in the y axis, maybe one over i, and then the horizontal axis, I'm going to do r there. Okay, so that's one thing you could do. Um, you know, you just kind of have to play around with the algebra to kind of figure out. There's not the only solution, but like just anything that you kind of use this format that you can like find what the slope and the y, y intercept are going to be would be sufficient. So we're going to plot this data. So I want to compute what one over i is right, this a to the negative one, and then we're going to um, put that onto the, so this is like 11.5, 1 divided by 0 0.06 is 16.7, 1 divided by 0 0.042, one. it's going to be 23.8, 1 divided by 0 0.027 is 37.0, and then 1 divided by 0 0.0, one six is 62.5. Okay, so that's gonna be my table of values in the interest of saving us a little bit of time. I'm just gonna copy that down to here so we can like record it more easily. Okay, so those are my values. Now my X axis, what I said was one over I, or did, is that what I said with the X? No, I said that was my Y value. So that's one over I, and then put the units as A to the negative one or one over amps. And then the X value is gonna be R there which is in ohms, okay? We wanna to go to uh, 200 through 1200. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So like each of these is 200. And then 11, like zero to 60, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, six, this is like 65-ish. One, two, three, four, five. 62.6, I don't know, we're gonna 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, so that's cool, and this is zero. So pretty good. So this is our. This is 200 and 11.5. Now each of these is one, two, three, four, five. So, one, two, so each of these is like two. So this is like 12, so 11.5 would be like right about there. Then 300 and 16.7, this would be 12, 14, 16, 18, 17 be halfway, so not quite halfway, but a little bit less. 450, 4, and each of these is 20, so 420, 440, 450. No, that's 500, sorry. Each of these is uh, 40, so 440 would be right here, so 4, 440, 480, 450 would be right around there, and then 23.8, 22, 24, 22, 24 little bit less than 24, so right around there. 700 is halfway between 600 and 800, and then 37. 32, 4, 6, 8, 7 is right there. And then 62, and then uh, 1200 and 62.5. That would be 62, 4, 6, 62, 4, so right around there, something like that. Okay. And then we want to determine the EMF, the battery. So we're going to use a slope, like a line. So I might, you know, like if you have a straight edge, it's a little bit easier. Oh, didn't work. Oops. 
uh, too much. Why are you confused? Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's try to draw a line. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can modify it so that it's. Eh. I might want the Y intercept, so I'm kind of. I really hate this tool. Okay, so mine's not particularly good. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit. Uh, okay. Um, one second. Okay, I played around with the line. I don't know, something like that is fine. I mean, you get the process, right? It's just kind of hard because of the OneNote tool. It's kind of annoying. Um, let's pick a couple of points that are easy to read off this graph. We'll pick that point there. And then we will pick um, second. And then we'll pick another point that's kind of far away. Um, what's a good point to pick? We should pick this point here. Okay, so this point is 10, 40, uh, 80, 11, 20. This is 11, 20. The y value is 52, 4, 6, 8, 58. Okay, x value here is going to be 40, 80, 5, 20. The y value is like 28. Okay, so what the slope is going to be, so the slope is going to equal 58 minus 28 over 1120 minus 520. So I get 30 on top divided by... 1120 minus 520, I don't know, 0.05. Now, what did we say the slope was going to give me? The slope's going to be 1 over epsilon. Now, that's equal to 1 over epsilon. So the epsilon I'm going to get is 1 divided by that, which should be 20, 20 volts. Okay, that's what I got approximately. All right, <clears throat> and that's it.